I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about um, inspiration. Don't fall. Things that inspire me, things that move me. I think we're all as creative people, artists, and um, you know, where does that come from? Where's the impetus um, for all this stuff? Skulls and flowers and um, drinking, and uh, you know, I can already tell you how inspired I've been by every one of you. The glass guy. I have tattoos. Um, I drink. Um, you know, it's been pretty incredible. So, go ahead. Um, beginnings. Uh, I grew up in uh, St. Clair County on a farm, and I realized at a very tender age that um, farming was hard work, and that these men that holding me were crazy, and I would never have time for important things like football. My football career was cut short, although I did make the All-State team. Uh, my mother saw something in me about drawing, and pretty soon I was um, going to watercolor classes on Tuesday and missing football. Um, Picasso. So I'm here to talk about inspiration instead of perspiration. Um, some heroes of mine, Picasso, um, from the time uh, I started studying art, um, he said, uh, every child is an artist. The problem is how we remain one once we grow up. Picasso remained quite the prankster and playful natured man all his life. But what I love about him is he continued to evolve. Um, Carlos Scarpa was a great architect. I've realized that many of my heroes were moderate scoundrels. Um, Scarpa was so rebellious he refused to sit for the architectural exam and so he never actually became a licensed architect. But as you can see, he was a master of form and space. And he created a place, um, a cemetery called Brion Vega, and he said uh, it was a place for the dead and it was a garden. Like, who says that? Um, Voicy, Charles Voicy, when I discovered him, my whole world changed in terms of how I sort of perceived architecture, and he's just been a great influence on me. He sandblasted all of the sort of BS off of architecture, like this is a board form concrete house, but with traditional lines to it, which I still love. Other things, um, buildings, Sagrada Familia, people ask me, uh, what's my favorite building in the world, and this is my answer. It's mind-boggling in its conception. It's epic in scale. It's been under construction since 1882, and it still has about 25 years left to go. Um, this architect said, um, the tree outside my studio tells me all I need to know about architecture, which brings me to nature. Um, nature resonates deep with inside me, probably because I grew up on a farm. Um, John Muir, somebody quoted Muir earlier, he said the clearest way through the universe is through a forest wilderness. I grew up in the woods and the fields and somehow it got inside me and it never left. I love the momentum of the earth and its power. So, which brings me to light. Um, uh, Celsius encouraged us to live in rooms filled with light. Light may literally and figuratively be the most powerful force in architecture. Because of the light, we have shape and form, and we have warmth and shadow. One of my favorite things about light is the way it moves across a room, and a room literally will become alive because of the way light moves across it. Another thing about light that I love is the absence of it, night, um, when we can appreciate the light because we have so much less of it, and then we have the man-made light. Um, and the Avett Brothers, one of my favorite bands, says, there's a darkness upon me that's flooded with light, and I'm frightened by those who don't see it. Um, churches or some other buildings that are very inspirational to me. Here you see like the Gothic, um, this nave with this heavy eternal solidity to it. It's been there 500 years and something echoes in my heart. And then you've got this other one that's the same lines as the Gothic one, still the same lines, but totally translucent and transparent so the light can flood through it. Um, barns are one of my favorite pieces of architecture. These are what we call the warrior poets of architecture. They're comfortable in who they are, and though humble, also simultaneously regal. They don't apologize for their bucolic and agrarian trappings, but are majestic in their rugged simplicity. The bottom one is actually a barn frame that we got from Pennsylvania and turned into a house. Um, bars, I did mention drinking. Um, like churches, bars are wonderful places to congregate. It's just a different kind of spirit being experienced. Probably more business deals and legal issues are sold in bars than any other place that we have. I love the cozy, cozy nature of a good bar. This is Gramercy Tavern in Manhattan, and then the other one is actually my office that I designed to feel like a bar in texture and coziness. Um, texture in materials. I'm stimulated by the characteristics of materials, the rough, the smooth, the sleek. Louis Kahn said, all material in nature, the mountains, the streams, and we are made of light which has been spent. This crumpled mass casts a shadow 
and the shadow belongs to the light. Stone is a huge um, material in, in my work. This is um, a project that we're doing up in North Carolina right now. You can see about 12 different kinds of stone in there. There's barnstone, there's brick, there's mortar, there's smaller stones. Um, I keep a bunch of smaller little rocks around my desk and in my studio. That's on the bottom left. It's just something amazing about stone for me. Um, stone is great, but inside there should be kind of another gear that happens. It's much like getting to know someone better. Um, the exterior tells a story, but the interior always tells the truth. Coco Chanel said, I look for the woman in the dress. If there is no woman, there is no dress. And something about interiors to me speaks of that whole quality. Um, this is actually our studio. Um, I believe anyone's personal creative space, there should be this kind of feeling of spirituality, emotion, um, whatever you want to call it. I need light and lots of rocks um, and other little you know, relics around me to feel comfy and cozy and to do my best work. And um, so that is, um, that is actually our studio at our office. Um, out of all that, create, we create roof lines and all, all these rocks and sunlight experiences form ideas and dreams. The designs of the roof lines and the mountains um, and the chimneys are like trees to me. Um, this, is, this is just kind of what comes out of that process. Um, in, the, in the sketching and the artful part of it, um, you know, you have the idea and then comes flowing out of the end of the pencil this, this thing. You don't know what it is at first. It's magical. It's amazing. If you've got a paper plate nearby because you're having a picnic with some wine, then you draw on that. If you've got the back of an envelope, then you draw on that. Um, and then what comes forth from that is um, built work. Um, and it's, it, whether this is Alice Beach over here on the left, and this is a, a project that we're building right now, um, a little construction photo, and then on the right, that is um, actually up in um, North Carolina on top of a mountain. But it all came from that inspirational moment in the sketch. Um, travel is, I don't know anything more important than travel um, for inspiration and um, kind of getting out of your normal um, scene, going to new places, seeing how other people live. On the bottom right, this is our entire firm, and we, we all went on a trip to Barcelona together two years ago so we could all share that um, you know, magic of travel. Um, so we're all on a journey. Um, of all the other things I would say about inspiration or the art of being inspired, I would talk about music, I'd talk about Louis Kahn, I would talk about words and their power. Um, we're all on a journey separately and together, and I'll leave you with, with one last word from Coco Chanel. The most courageous act is still to think for yourself aloud. <laughs>